Hello everyone, Leah here. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Jackson's Artist watercolor paint. They are the in-house brand paints that you can purchase from Jackson's Art Supply. In this video, we are gonna be going over how the paint performs in some basic testing that we're gonna do, as well as switching over from a clinical test to a in real life scenario. So I'm gonna do some swatching and then I'm gonna switch over to doing a painting in my Etcher sketchbook. And I'm gonna let you guys know all about these paints, the pigments, how they perform, my thoughts and opinions, and really just answer the question is, are these good paints? Are they worth the cost? And do they stack up to my favorite brand of watercolor paints? But most importantly, are these watercolors good for beginners or those who are just getting into using art as a tool towards healing? So let's dive right in. The first test I wanna conduct is seeing how the paint lifts for the first time when being used versus pre-wetting it. Is the paint very vibrant or is it really hard for it to activate? As you can see, it activated actually really nicely, but if you give it a few minutes, you get even bolder, brighter colors with it. Doing a test like this, I find really does show you the caliber of the paint and its quality because some paints, they they require some serious um, time to activate by spritzing them with water versus just having a wet brush and diving right in to use it from a pan. All in all, yes, there's a difference in color, but I'm so impressed. Now let's do some strength tests. So basically what I'm gonna be doing is just wetting an area down grabbing some paint and seeing how strong this pigment is and how far it'll move. Not all brands have the same movement within water. Some of them are very, um, uh, how's, what's the word? When it just doesn't move. Stagnant. No, that's not right. But <laughs> it has no flow, basically. They don't really move on the paper with the water. Where um, a lot of some brands, like say for example, um, Core, as soon as you dab them in some paint in some water and they're like shooting off, they're like whoosh, spreading like there's no tomorrow. Um, and that can also coincide with the pigments that are being used, but also it has a lot to do with what those pigments are mixed with for their binder. And doing this test with a couple of the color options and seeing how they work, how they spread, do they mix once they've been added to these colors and things like that can really tell you a lot about how these paints are gonna perform when you're actually doing a painting. So this test right here is basically just seeing how the Prussian blue color will spread because that's a powerful pigment. But now I'm adding in a second color next to it to see if they will blend together. Will they reach out to each other? Will they separate once they, you know, mix and do things? Um, but off the bat, I noticed that the red didn't really move that much in the water. I had to like kind of move it around myself to see if it would move around and interact with it. For this next test, what I'm gonna be doing is mixing the colors on the paper. Traditionally, this is not my approach to creating color mixes. I use a palette, I mix them before I put them down, but this can be a fun exercise type thing for creating paintings and doing things. And this might actually be your approach to mixing your colors because you prefer that kind of bold, vibrant color mixing where you don't know what you're gonna get and it can be a magical mystery. Um, so I wanted to do this and it also gives me an idea as to how staining these colors are because sometimes, sometimes you're using a paint and when you mix it with another, it can be overpowering and it might stain the paper. So even if you have another color mixing in with it, you can sort of see the other one underneath it. And so doing this lets me kind of get an idea as to how they mix, how they perform on the paper with two different pigments. It's more of a concentrated version of the color blending one that I did previously with the Prussian blue and the red. 
little side note, the uh, quinacridone gold that's being mixed right now with the Prussian blue makes a beautiful green. It's so vibrant, so beautiful. Now let's switch over to me creating something in the real world versus doing just tests and swatching. As I go over this paint and let you know more about the brand, the pigments, how it's made, and what I think about this paint all in all. First up, I feel like I should have a disclaimer here. I am a mixed media artist, so if you aren't familiar with my channel, most of my artwork consists of me mixing different things together, whether I'm making a floral painting or an abstract painting, I'm using multiple uh, modes of creation, different materials. So you're going to see that throughout this painting. I'm mixing my colored crayons and, you know, different tools for texture and markers and kinds of things like that. So just a heads up. Jackson's Artist Watercolor Paint comes in 48 color options. Of these colors, I would actually call this palette selection available to you as a traditional watercolorist palette so you have your cools and your warms of both yellow uh, reds blues and a few convenience colors like purples and greens and a few of the earthy tones like burnt sienna and burnt umber for each of these colors they come in four options for purchasing you can buy it as a 10 ml tube a 21 ml tube or within the traditional half pan or full pan options. Personally, I bought some half pans and full pans because that is the form I prefer to purchase my paints in right now. As for what this paint has been made with, it was made with gum arabic, honey, water, and artist pigments. So what made this paint so good about lifting for the first time, you know, from dry to wet, is that honey component in its binder. That's what's stopping it from being a chalky paint. Of the 48 colors that they have, I've purchased the lemon yellow, permanent sap green, phthalo green deep, ultramarine light, Prussian Blue, Alizarian Crimson, Jackson's Red, their Opera Rose, Burnt Umber, and Quinacrinome Gold. Let's talk about pricing and what makes this brand so amazing compared to others. So I'm going to use the Quinacrinome Gold as my standard color where I'm going to look at it throughout different brand options because I owned the I own the quinacridone gold in a full pan. So currently right now on Jackson's website, and keep in mind this is Canadian dollars that I'm looking at, a full pan is $8. And their full tube paint is 21 ml, and that's for $15.05. So let's just round that to 15, okay? For um, argument's sakes of comparisons, now let's look at Schmincke, which is a high quality brand. It's a name brand that most people have heard of before. For their full tube paint, so for their largest size that you can buy, it's 15 ml, so it's less than the uh, Jackson's, and it's priced at $23.43. You get less paint, but for more dollars. And their full pan is listed at $14.67. So for this, at least it's apples to apples in comparison to size. You are both getting the same standard full pan sizing, but you are paying more by going with, say, um, Schmincke. And let's also compare it to Daniel Smith because they're too a big brand of paint. And for them, their full tube paint which is also 15 ml, because that's usually the standard size, they're priced at $19.33. But their half pan for Daniel Smith is $10. If I were interested in getting a half pan from Jackson's, theirs is $5.62. So for dollar for dollar, size for size, Jackson's is the route to go. And I just want to be fair too, because I have a favorite brand and my favorite brand of paints is Roman Schmalls. I love them for their color options. I love them for their quality and the way everything's made and the way their colors look like favorite brand. Um, 
for a full pan of their quinacridone gold, it's $8.76. So price range wise, Jackson's is very comparable to the Roman Schmalls and quality wise, they are very comparable to these high end quality brands. Low end pricing usually means low end quality, but not with this paint. You have pro quality artist grade paints here with the Jacksons in my opinion. The colors are beautiful, the way they blend together is amazing, their flow is powerful and strong, and the pigments that they're using are good quality pigments. Throughout the progression of this painting, you could see how I was able to lift the paint for that one leaf, how the other colors blend and flow it from wet onto wet and wet onto dry. Now I will note that yes, there was some color shift with these darker leaves and you saw it, it was this, it was this deep dark color and now that it's dried, it's not as vibrant of a color, but that is is kind of common with the colors that I use to mix this color. So I was using Alizarian Crimson and as a pigment I have found traditionally with my other brands that it is a strong color for color shift. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm coming to the end of the painting unfolding is I'm going to switch back over to my tabletop and we're going to take a look at everything dried. Before I get into showing you how everything looks dried, I thought we could do some quick color comparisons. So when it comes to the Jackson's art supplies, I have a couple of the same colors in different brands. And I thought we could just take a look and see of how they vary between them. So starting with the Prussian blue, this one right here is the Jackson's and then this one here is the Roman Schmalls. When we take a look at it, they're both made with the same pigment, but they are, you know, they are different in appearance. So the um, Jackson's is on the softer side. It's not as deep of a color, uh, not as bold, um, but you know, that can come up to personal preference as to whether or not you prefer it. I. I actually think this is a really beautiful color, though I do lean towards the Roman Smalls just because I like the texture and the granulation that's in the paint. Speaking about granulation, I love my Roman Schmalls uh, French Ultramarine, and this one here is the Jackson's version of the Ultramarine. As you can see, it's not as granulating between them but it's still a very beautiful blue. Not everybody likes granulation. So if you are the type of person that really likes smooth colors, then I think Jackson's would be a perfect paint for you. This is their Opera Rose, and this one here is not a direct comparison. It's from my uh, Mission Gold. It's their Bright Rose, and they use different pigments. So this one only has one pigment, this one has three, but color-wise, they're very similar between the two. And But again, this one has a smoother finish, so less granulation. For the Quinacrone Gold, um, I have the Quinacrone Gold from Schminke. I bought it in a tube many years ago, um, and it was made using almost the same. So Jackson's has an extra pigment in it. Honestly, color wise, they're pretty much identical. The difference is again, this one has more granulation to it. So more texture to the paint. And then as for the Alizarian Crimson, this one here is Jackson's and this one here is Daniel Smith. Again, I've had this for years. I don't really use this color anymore. It's been whew, a while. They were made using the same pigment, PR83. And this one did have quite a bit of color shift. So does this one. Um, but I would say between the two, the Jackson's one does shift more. You watch this side unfold live on camera. So let's take a little closer look at how it appears. So when it comes to the blending and the how far it'll reach, 
these colors do amazing. They have amazing strength and power. And yes, these two didn't blend like I originally thought they would, but they still created some interesting appearances with the water once it dried and the pigments and how it performed to create this beautiful appearance. And then remember how I was talking about how mixing colors on paper can sometimes show you whether or not one pigment is staining or stronger than the other. Well, with this one here, you can actually see that underneath let me see if it's in focus, if it's close, that you can still see the pink underneath where the purple is starting to go over top. So this one was done with the, uh, this one here, which is their um, ultramarine light and the opera rose. Something that I always like to do with all of my paints and that I do recommend trying for yourself is creating a mixing chart of sorts. So whichever performance or whichever way you prefer to create them. Um, I went with a traditional size grid format and I picked only a few of the colors that I found that intrigued me from the palette that I purchased. So I didn't do a full palette mix. But from this, you're able to really get to know your paints, your color mixes, what your options are. And because of this, I was able to create some really interesting color swatches. So I, if I found a color here, like say for example, this one right here, which is the Opera Rose and the Burnt Umber, and I was like, ooh, I like that color. I then brought it here into my sketch, my color swatching book, and I explored it a little bit further by doing different variations of the mixes. And this allowed me to really just see what the capabilities are of these paints and with a traditional styled palette where you don't have as many convenience colors, but a lot of mixing colors. As you can see, you can create beautiful color palettes with these paints. I think these paints are beautifully made. They work well with one another. They work with my other supplies, which is really important to me as a mixed media artist, because sometimes not all um, things work well together gel wise based on what they're made with. Um, so I found that these worked amazing and see how soft this is. You can still see the petal that I painted, but it softly blends with the color around it. It's very beautifully done. And you can still get crisp, hard edges when you do uh, wet onto dry. I think these paints are definitely worth grabbing if you are new to watercolor or new to using art as a tool towards healing. And I wanna just show you also one other painting that I did, uh, just so you can see it in a non-abstracty way, because I also painted these flowers one day. I sat outside with my dog, the weather was beautiful, and I just relaxed with a painting, and they layer beautifully on top of one another. They provide soft, flowing, uh, movements when you're using wet onto wet and wet onto dry. Do these paints stack up against my favorite brand of watercolor paints? Yes, I think they're a really great quality. The only thing that I have against them is that they don't have the variety of colors that I'm used to and that I prefer as an artist. So that's my personal preference. When it comes to you, you might actually like the idea of being able to mix your colors, learn color mixing, doing those kinds of things. That might be something that is your personal style. Um, but when it comes to how the paint performs, how it dries, how it's able to be lifted easily. So I can do like the lifting technique from wet to lift. Um, I really like how these paints perform and they're very much like my favorite brand. The real difference is convenience colors. Are they good for beginners? 100% yes. 
that price range alone is a yes 100% for me. But then when you factor in their capabilities for mixing, flowing, blending, wet on wet, wet on dry, lifting, working with textures and things like that, they give you room for exploring watercolors and creating some amazing pieces of art. The only negative I have about these paints is that they do reactivate really easily, but that's kind of normal for watercolor paints. Um, so these aren't as staining as other brands or other pigments and other components for um, binders. For example, when I was drawing this round, shape here with my acrylic marker you can see that as i was drawing here i was picking up the pigment from this paint that had been dry for over a day so i did this painting here in a series of days so when i had uh five minutes to myself and me time i would paint some layers i came back and drew some more i came back and did some more kind of thing and you can see that it does it does uh lift and drag it with it but that's my only negative critique is that it they are rewettable. But again, guys, this is watercolor and watercolor kind of has that effect. <laughs> I hope today's review has been very helpful for you and will be a source of information on your journey towards healing with art. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. I wanna thank you all for watching this video and for being a part of this community where we use art as a tool towards healing. Before we say goodbye, I just wanna take a moment to do our, a deep breathing exercise where we're gonna focus on today's affirmation. And today's affirmation is today, I am patient with myself and with those who surround me. So let's take a deep breath in, bringing in positivity. I'm releasing it as we push out any negativity. Let's do one more deep breath in. And exhale. All right, let's shake off our limbs. Get rid of any negativity we may be holding on in our body. All righty. Thank you once again. And until next time, stay magical.